When I was like 14, my uh, my best friend had passed away from cancer. And I got like, you know, like sad and like depressed about it and everything like that. I don't know why, but like, I went with like one of my friends to like some dude in a basement and he was getting a tattoo. And um, like the idea just kind of like popped in my head to get one. And um, like even my dad was like cool with it because he knew that like, you know, like he loved the girl too. Like she was such a sweetheart. And I ended up getting a tattoo for her. And, it was just kind of one of those things that like click. People ask you what you want to be when you grow up. You never say like a tattoo or you say like a firefighter or like, you know, a policeman or something. That was kind of when I was like, no, this is what I want to do forever. I think black and gray was kind of like what I'd always been into. I'd always liked like the more like, like vintage photo. I always liked like watching shows like, like I Love Lucy, like back in the day. I just thought it was like, such like a cool, like clean look. It was actually a guy in a shop I was working with. He's the one who kind of like took me under his wing and like, you know, kind of like redefined me. Like, I never had like a normal like apprenticeship. It was more like self-taught and then like, he just kind of like helped me out a little bit. But that's what he did. And like, he asked me one day, he was like, if you could do one thing every day, what would it be? I was like, black and gray realism. He was like, well, perfect. I can show you that. Black and gray is tricky just cause it's like, I always try to explain to my clients like while I'll, you know, why I'm doing like this huge area and then I wipe it away and like nothing's there. It's because we you build your tones. So with black and gray, like if you ended up making too many passes over an area, it can darken it up. Like you literally have to build it to the point, realize where it's at and then stop. You know what I mean? Because you can take a light tone and then if you go over it enough, it can look really, really, really dark. It's pretty much just like, it, it's all about patience. I mean, with black and gray, you're using so much skin and you're using so much transparency that like making it a smooth like texture is like extremely hard. As opposed to like color, if as long as you saturate it, it looks smooth. It doesn't matter how you do it, you know? So with black and gray, it's more of like a finesse. It's, it's just a lot of like trial and error. Like doing black and gray is like, like doing any style is different than one another. It's just, it's like a completely different application, you know? That's why you can have like amazing color artists that are like, I don't know how to do black and gray because it's, it's different worlds, you know? So I, I really just like isolated into that and just tried to put my focus onto it just to try to like learn it as best as I can. Like I feel like every black and gray artist like either has or should done, like has done like a Marilyn Monroe and somehow I've avoided that for like a decade. So, it, it's something that I've kind of like always wanted to do. It's like an iconic, you know, tattoo to do. Most of her photos are like really washed out or like really blurry and everything because they didn't exactly have iPhones back then, you know? I actually got lucky with hers. It's one of those like gold mines you find every now and then. It's like, it seemed like somebody had taken a classic photo of her and then done like a digital re-rendering of it and like cleaned it up and like smoothed it out and like gave it like better value. So that's what I used. I don't have like a set way that I like do stuff. It's like some people are like work dark to light. You know, some people are like, you know, put in your blacks first. Like that doesn't really work for me because it seems like, you know, every tattoo in every area is different. You know, I pretty much like section it out because I feel like if you look at too much at once, like you'll, you'll just get like overwhelmed, you know, like look at an area that has like a bunch of different values in there, you know, like, you know, sometimes it'll work better to go light to dark. Sometimes it'll be better to go dark to light. And then, you know, you can compare your values against one another. And then when you move on to your next area, then you can compare the values of that against the one that you've already done. The Marilyn Monroe I did today, it's like, it's all neck. So it's just big, smooth areas. So I can just get in there and just, you know, grind it out. Finding references is everything when it comes to doing not only black and gray realism, but just realism in general. I'll spend hours looking for references. Like my computers are just like jam packed with just like folders of reference images. Cause a lot of times, like if I'm doing like, if I'm doing like a face on somebody, just like some surrealistic like woman's face, you know, I'll sit there and I'll look for them forever and I'll find a million that are like really cool, just ones that I'm not gonna use for that tattoo and I'll just save them. One of the hardest things with, especially with like faces and like realism is like, people will get nervous and like start putting lines in places. Like if you see a face that has lines in it, you know they don't know what they're doing and they're panicking. Cause like everyone that believes that there should be like lines in realism is like, well, if you go out, if you look at somebody's face, there's no hard lines in it. Like I'll use a liner for like eyelashes, but like 
that's about it. A lot of things I've noticed with people is like they don't know the difference between what's really dark and what's actually true black and what is like super light versus what's white. People like print out a piece of paper and then they'll tattoo base off of that. And if it's a portrait, it's like you gotta realize like, like they're not that light, you know what I mean? So like you have to like actually learn where, to, where you need to put some ink and not just leave like this huge gaping open like skin tone. Well, that's a famous thing with like doing black and gray is that they they lighten up when they heal. So a lot of times like I try to like I try to like combat that like starting with the reference that I pick. I want to find one with a lot of like good like medium and dark values because those are the ones that like even though even if they lighten up a little bit like they're still going to be like the ones that like hold well. I use a f load of black too because that's that's just what's going to stay in your skin and just last forever. I also like when I have like a reference like I'll take it and I'll darken it up a little bit. If I'm going for like the original image, like I'll darken it and that's what I'll copy. So that way I can kind of like already like, I'm compensating for it lightening while I'm tattooing it. One of my, uh, well, a couple of my personal favorites, one of them was just here is Robbie Latos. I looked at different people for different things. Like Robbie like has like some of the best texture I've ever seen in the world. Michael Perry is a buddy of, my, a buddy of mine, he works right in love or a love machine in soho tj pool does a lot of like really really cool textures there's so many different artists that like have like such cool things that they do and it seems like they look they'll like be like they'll have a knack for like doing texture or doing smooth or like just their design or like you know like the flow of like the whole design or, like the way they design and everything so what i try to do is i try to like take like pieces from each of them you know what i mean say like if i really like you know robbie's texture that's what i'm going to try to like you know, pick up ones for when I'm doing skulls or, you know, something like that. Or if I really like Michael Perry's smooth, that's what I'm gonna try to figure out how he does that for when I do like faces. David Vega is another one. He's the only person I ever saw do the hand motions that he does. And that's what I found worked for me. I don't think that there is traditional rules. Like if there was, then like people wouldn't have gotten any better. Like people are always setting new rules. If I was apprenticing somebody, I would tell them like all the different ways, like there's like pendulum, like, you know, I call it like a lawnmower where pretty much you just rake somebody, you know? I would tell them all of those, but it's kind of like, you find which one works well for you. Cause I like, I know people that can tattoo absolutely amazing and they do like a, a fast, like, you know, like back and forth motion. That just doesn't work for me anymore. You know, so it's kind of like, Find all of like the, the options and then, you know, like try them like honestly and then find which one works best for you.